Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, your look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. Baseball fever continues in Kansas City as our boys in blue were crowned the world champions. The city hosted an incredible parade for the team through downtown and along Grand Boulevard and then that big victory rally at Union Station. I don't know how many cities we have in the United States, but right now, there's only one mayor in the entire United States who can say he's a world champion mayor, and that's Sly James. Best fans in the world! Best team in the world! Best city in the world! Thanks to all of you for coming out here. Thanks to all the sponsors who made this possible. Thanks to every single one of you for doing this right, showing the rest of the world what it means to win with class, to never ever quit, and to always come out on top. This team is like our city. We never quit. Thank you. If you attended the parade, you may have noticed some cool blue baseball-inspired banners hanging downtown. The city has installed these banners with the KC moniker as a tribute to our team. You can show your KC pride with your own replica banner for just $25. Just visit kcmo.gov store for sales information. Part of the proceeds will also benefit the City of Fountains Foundation, which helps maintain the city's iconic fountains. Congratulations goes out to Evan Carlisle, who has won one of these colorful banners for his entry in our How Blue Are You contest. Residents were invited to submit a photo or video recognizing the team's performance in the postseason on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Evan had a pretty winning entry, which uh, creatively combined his Kansas City and his Royals pride. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with Kansas City Parks and Recreation. The year is winding down, but there's no shortage of things to do. Mark your calendars and bring your friends and family out to enjoy our Casey Parks facilities and events. The 2015 Big 12 Women's Soccer Championship returns to Swope Soccer Village on November 4th, 6th, and 8th. The tournament features the Big 12's top eight teams competing for the conference's postseason title and an automatic bid to the NCAA Division I Women's Soccer Championship. The championship package, with tickets to all games, is only $15. Purchase today at Big12Sports.com. Celebrate Veterans Day on Wednesday, November 11th at the National World War I Museum at Liberty Memorial. A public ceremony at 10 a.m. features local dignitaries and a keynote address from Army University Provost Brigadier General John S. Kem. A Walk of Honor brick dedication ceremony follows at 1 p.m. And here's a bonus. The museum is free and open to the public the entire day. For more information, visit theworldwar.org. Knock down the most pins and take home a Thanksgiving turkey at Turkey Bowling on Ice from 2 to 4 p.m. on Saturday, November the 14th. Frozen turkeys replace bowling balls at this fun family event at the Lime Creek Community Center, 5940 Northwest Wacomas Drive. Kris Kringle and Canines take place on Saturday, November 21st from 1 to 3 p.m. at the Wagon Trail Dog Park in North Kansas City. Take your pooch's picture with Santa, enjoy caroling, dog-friendly vendors, hot chocolate, and more. Details at caseyparks.org. For more information about these and other events, visit the Parks and Recreation website at caseyparks.org or give us a call at 816-513-7500. Tutera, and I am the director of the Kansas City Museum. Today we are in the Historic Garment District Museum that was founded in 2002 
by Anne Brownfield and Harvey Freed. And today we're celebrating both Anne and Harvey because they have entrusted this museum to the care and maintenance of the City of Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation Department. Parks and Rec will now be operating and managing this location in addition to taking care of an incredible collection of, of over 300 Kansas City made garments and accessories that was once part of the Garment District Museum's collection and now becomes part of the Kansas City Museum's collection. Hi everyone, I'm Denise Morrison with the Kansas City Museum. I'm here at the Historic Garment District Museum, which is now under the Kansas City Museum umbrella, part of our family. It's in a historic building of the Garment District. Kansas City has a very prominent role to play in the Garment District history of our country. It was the second largest manufacturer in the city and one of the largest in the country. Its garment union, ladies' garment union, was the largest in the country at one time. So this area on Broadway, about a several block uh, section of Broadway, is really historic, not just for our city, but for the country. Kansas City made a name for itself in the garment district uh, of the country by doing what's called piecework. In other words, in the past, uh, sewers would be given a whole outfit to create uh, one each, and they do it the whole outfit at a time. In Kansas City, much like Henry Ford, they did it piecemeal, so one worker would do just buttonholes, one would do just seams, and then at the end, it would all be put together, the piece would all be put together. So very much like an assembly line sped up and was much more efficient for um, the uh, manufacture of clothing. There were so many bill, uh, businesses in the garment district uh, particularly between the World Wars and right after World War II. It all started uh, leaving uh, about the 60s when all of downtown started seeing a decline. Um, but this great museum at 801 Broadway has some great history, some great clothing to show, all manufactured here in Kansas City. And we'd love to see you come down and visit us. Museums often play a vital role in transforming neighborhoods and communities and inspiring really in inventive ideas. We're hoping that our presence here at the Garment District Museum will help to inspire a conversation about reactivating the historic Garment District for its intended purpose. We're hoping to join forces with local fashion designers and manufacturers to imagine what it would be like to have retail and workshop space here in the Garment District. The Garment District Museum is open on Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and by appointment Wednesday through Friday. The general admission for the Garment District Museum is free. For more information about the Historic Garment District Museum, please visit www.kansascitymuseum.org or call 816-513-0726. The barn doors were left open at the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department Mounted Patrol for the horses to get out and show off their police work. Dozens of visitors came for the KCPD annual open house called Behind the Badge and Bridal, put on by friends of the Kansas City Mounted Patrol. A captive audience watched how members of KCPD used the horses to arrest suspects and maintain crowd control. Following demonstrations, the audience was allowed to ask questions and get up close and personal with the horses. Alice Lee Hollister is chairperson of the Friends of the Kansas City Mounted Patrol. The nonprofit organization provides financial support for needs not funded in the police department's budget. We have done so much for them, and we're now down to things like uh, in-house sound system, uh, hay elevator, hay bale elevator for the for the hay uh, the loft up there. Um, we've purchased some huge fan that's running, I think, out in the in the arena. Uh, in-house watering system, in-house and, and uh, paddock, and those are just a few things. 
but uh, with horses there's always something and uh, for the comfort of the officers in the saddle there's always something so we are just extremely pleased to support the KC Mo Mounted Police. The event included a demonstration by the K-9 unit and special appearances by the tactical response team and the bomb and arson squad with plenty of refreshments. Macy and Alicia Littlejohn are daughters of one of KCPD's finest who came out to enjoy the show. My favorite one is probably the white one. Visitors also got a chance to see what goes into taking care of the horses behind the scenes. And that's why Sergeant Joey Roberts says it's important that citizens understand why the KCPD Mounted Patrol is necessary. You know, awareness is, is, is a big thing, you know, where they can, you know, see what it takes, you know, the, the things that we have to do to train our horses to, to, to be police horses. Uh, and really, you know, this is the only place that we can do that, you know, show them some of the obstacles and uh, the different formations and crowd control and uh, you know because when we're actually doing the crowd control a lot of times you know people don't get to see that other than the people that are actually involved so you know it's good for people to see how the horses can be effective and and that they are effective you can learn more about Friends of the Mounted Patrol on their Facebook page or visit their website at kcmountedpatrol.org. I'm Sergeant Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. The first new streetcar has arrived and it still has that new car smell. Don't be surprised if you see the streetcar running downtown but with no passengers. The testing phase has just started. Each car must travel for hundreds of miles at various speeds to test all operational aspects of the vehicle, as well as the load on the electrical wires that power the vehicles. I'm a downtown resident. This is going to go right by my condo and, and provide a really great way to get around downtown without having to drive or walk too far. So it's, really, it's a really exciting morning for downtown. I think it means um, an old, new way to connect neighborhoods and community and get people to the heart of the city and spread that goodwill everywhere and it's it's more than a vehicle it's a connector i just think it represents like the growth and development that's happening and just the vibrancy in the city that just seems to get better and better around here in observance of the upcoming veterans day holiday city offices and the 311 call center will be closed on wednesday november 11th also, curbside trash and recycling collection will be delayed one day through the end of the week. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, go to kcmo.gov and search Channel 2. That page has a link to our YouTube channel and a Channel 2 program guide. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.